In this video, we're doing another related rates problem. And in this particular problem, we've been told that an airplane is flying horizontally at 480 miles per hour, three miles above the ground, when it passes an observer on the ground. And then we're asked, how fast is the distance between the person, the observer, and the plane increasing 30 seconds after that happens? So I've gone ahead and drawn a diagram of what we're talking about. We have the ground here and a person standing on the ground. We know that the airplane is flying three miles above the ground, so we have this distance here of three miles between the ground and the airplane, which is flying perfectly horizontally. So it's not increasing in height or decreasing in height. It's staying at this constant three miles above the ground. Now because this height of three miles is constant and because we know that the plane is flying perfectly horizontally, what we can do is indicate that we have a right triangle here, a 90 degree angle, and we can see that the distance between the person and the airplane 30 seconds later, it's at this spot right here, and the distance between the observer and the airplane is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, where one leg of the triangle is three miles and the other leg of the triangle is 30 seconds. Now this three mile side right here, that's never gonna change because the plane is flying perfectly horizontally. But this 30 second distance right here, that is gonna change as the plane continues to fly. So this leg will continue to get longer and longer as the plane continues to fly, and so will the distance between the observer and the airplane. So this leg and the hypotenuse hypotenuse will continue to increase in length. So how do we deal with this as a related rates problem? Well, we have these two distances here changing, increasing, with respect to time. Remember that because we have a right triangle, we can model this scenario with the Pythagorean theorem. So if we call this side A, and if we call this side B, and the hypotenuse is always C, then we can say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So when we have related rates problems, we can always plug in for values that aren't changing. Again, this three mile distance here is never gonna change, so we can go ahead and plug three miles in for a. So we get three squared or nine, so we can say nine plus b squared is equal to c squared. But the length of side b and the length of side c are gonna continue to change as the plane continues to fly. So we're not gonna be able to plug in for those variables yet. Also, we need to find the distance between the observer and the airplane. So we're looking at the distance, the length of these sides. Right now, the length of side B is given to us in terms of time, because we know that we're interested in 30 seconds after the plane passes the observer, which is why we said 30 seconds here. In order to convert this to a distance, we go back to our problem, which tells us that the plane is flying at 480 miles per hour. So in other words, how fast does the plane travel in 30 seconds if it's traveling at 480 miles per hour? Well, we can set up a proportion. We can say if the plane travels 480 miles in one hour, how far does it travel? In other words, X miles, how far does it travel in 30 seconds? And we're gonna do a little analysis with our units here. So first of all, let's cross multiply 480 miles by 30 seconds. So we're gonna say 480 miles multiplied by 30 seconds is equal to, cross multiply the other way, one hour multiplied by x miles. Then what we wanna do is divide both sides by x miles to cancel the x miles on this side. We'll end up with 480 miles divided by x miles. If we also divide both sides by 30 seconds, we'll get 30 seconds to cancel on the left, move it to the right, and we'll get one hour divided by 30 seconds. Now what we can do is cancel our units, miles and miles here. If we change this one hour into seconds, first of all, we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So instead of saying one hour, let's say 60 minutes. And then instead of saying 60 minutes, we know there are 60 seconds in each minute. So if we want to convert 60 minutes into seconds, we just multiply 60 by 60 and we get 3600 seconds. So we can say 3600 seconds. Now we have seconds in the numerator and seconds in the denominator, which we can cancel. So what we end up with is 480 divided by x is equal to 3600 over 30. Well, we can cancel a zero from each of those, so we end up with 360 divided by 3, which is 120. Now we can multiply both sides by x, and we get 480 equals 120x. Dividing both sides by 120, we get x equals 480 over 120. 
and of course that's just x equals 4. So remember we were interested in our original proportion in x miles. So in other words, the plane travels 4 miles in 30 seconds. So instead of saying 30 seconds here, we can change this distance to 4 miles. So now we know that the height of the triangle here is 3 miles, that the length here of this side is 4 miles, and we can go ahead and find the length of the hypotenuse, in other words, the distance between the observer and the airplane at 30 seconds after the plane passes the observer. So we already said a was equal to 3, and we plugged in 3 for a. We got 3 squared, or 9. Now we're saying that b is equal to 4, so we get 9 plus 4 squared is equal to c squared, where c is the length of the hypotenuse. We don't know that yet. So we get 9 plus 4 squared is 16 equals c squared. 9 plus 16 is 25, so we get 25 equals c squared. If we take the square root of both sides, we get c is equal to 5. So 30 seconds after the plane passes the observer on the ground, when it's 4 miles away with this distance here, the distance directly between the person and the plane is 5 miles at that particular point. But remember, if we go back to our question, we've been asked, how fast is the distance between the person and the plane increasing? In other words, how fast is C changing? We found the specific value for C 30 seconds later, but we want to know how fast C is changing at that point, not what the value of C is at that point. So what we need to do is use implicit differentiation to differentiate both sides of our 9 plus b squared equals c squared equation. We still leave the value in for a because this value of a, 3 miles, is not changing, where the value here, 4 miles and 5 miles, will change. But we can leave a plugged in, so we have 9 plus b squared equals c squared. If we use implicit differentiation to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to t, the derivative of 9, since it's a constant, is just 0, so that's going to disappear. The derivative of b squared is 2b, so we get 2b, but then we have to multiply this by db over dt, the rate at which b is changing with respect to time, and then same thing over here on the right hand side, the derivative of c squared is 2c, but then we have to multiply by dc over dt, the rate at which c is changing with respect to time. Now going back to the problem again, remember we've been asked how fast is the distance between the person and the plane increasing? Well the distance between the person and the plane is c. The rate at which c is changing is dc over dt. In other words, the value that we need to solve for in this problem is dc over dt, which means we want to plug in for all of the other variables. We need to plug in for b, we need to plug in for db over dt, and we need to plug in for c, so that all we have left is dc over dt. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're interested in the rate of change of c, dc over dt, at 30 seconds after the plane passes the person. Well, we know that at that time, b is 4 miles. So we can plug in for b and say that b is 4 miles miles. We know that db dt is the rate at which b is changing with respect to time. Since the plane is flying left to right here at 480 miles per hour, we can go ahead and say 480 miles per hour is the rate of change of b because that's how fast the length of this side of the triangle is increasing or how fast b is changing with respect to time. We're going to set that equal to 2 times c, well we know c at this point is 5 miles, so we can go ahead and say 5 miles, and then dc dt is the value that we want to leave in the equation because that's the value we want to solve for. So if we divide both sides of our equation by 2, we can see that we're going to get 2 here to cancel with 2 here. If we divide both sides of the equation by 5 miles, we're going to be able to cancel the 5 miles over here on the right and move it to the left and say 5 miles over here on the left, then we'll be able to cancel these units, miles and miles. We can say that 5 goes into 480 96 times, so we can cancel the 5 and make it a 1. We can cancel the 480 and make it a 96. So then what we end up with here in the numerator, first of all on the right hand side we only have dc over dt remaining, so we can say dc over dt is going to be equal to, and then over here on the left in the numerator, 4 times 96 gives us 384, and we still have these miles units here, so 384 
miles, and in the denominator we just have one and the units hours, so divided by one hour. So then what we can do is simplify and just say dc over dt, or the rate at which this distance here c is changing, is 384 miles per hour. And that's how fast the distance between the person and the plane is increasing 30 seconds after the plane passes the person on the ground.